The Green Knight, released in 2021 and is directed by David Lowry. It's a retelling of the Arthurian myth of the Knight Gawain and his adventure to face off against the titular Green Knight, an embodiment of nature and death itself. Now this is an A24 feature, so it's expected that the film would be a little bit more visually expressive and have more artistic risks taken in it, especially considering this is made by David Lowry, who put Casey Affleck under a sheet and had him wander about a house pretending to be a ghost for a whole movie. And although I actually enjoyed Ghost Story quite a bit, despite its very slow pace, I can't really see myself ever revisiting it again. Thankfully, The Green Knight is a lot more narratively fulfilling. It's not hard to do, but still. And I do see myself revisiting this film, but it can also have those similar moments to a ghost story where you feel like it's a little bit inert, as if not much is happening on the screen. It's very much in the camp of atmosphere of a concrete plot, which some people hate and some people love. In the case of The Green Knight, I found myself enjoying and feeling intrigued much more than bored or frustrated, although I confess I did feel all four of those emotions over the runtime of the film. So Dev Patel stars as Gawain, or Gawain, however they say it in this film, a young man who has no father figure and is not very committed to his girlfriend, stays out at night drinking, uh, but aside from this he's largely inoffensive. Perhaps it's implied he's a little bit lazy. Despite this he wants to be a knight of the round table and sees an opportunity to prove himself when the unsettling Green Knight arrives on Christmas Day. The Green Knight challenges the Knights of the Round Table to strike him with their swords, and a year hence, he will strike them back the same way he was struck. So obviously, Gawain just nicks him on the side of his face and says, okay, you can nick me on the side of the face next year, and that'll be fine, right? No, of course he doesn't do that, otherwise it wouldn't be a story. Gawain arrogantly recklessly beheads the knight, believing the Green Knight to be dead, and so he, he wouldn't be able to return the blow ever. So, obviously, obviously, as being Arthurian legend, the Green Knight just gets up, picks up his head, and puts it back on his body. Like, as I said, why not just cut him slightly? This guy is clearly magic, why risk it? So Dev Patel does his best to portray a young man eager to prove his worth to his king and the older knights, but the question remains. Is he a bit stupid? He doesn't do anything half as stupid for the rest of the film. Mostly it's, it's just a decision made for plot, and we probably shouldn't think too hard about it. The anonymous poet who wrote The Green Knight probably didn't, as he's much more concerned with the implications of the coming journey for Gawain, as is the audience. And so a year passes and Gawain must set out to find The Green Knight. If he returns, he'll be a true knight and get everything he's ever wanted. He sets out and this is where the film really gets going. He comes across several vignette style mini stories which test and tempt him in various ways. Side note here, it's a little difficult to get Monty Python and the Holy Grail out of your head while watching this, especially during some of the first vignette scenes, especially, uh, the one with a guy from Killing of a Sacred Deer. Eventually he reaches the Green Knight and has to make the decision to either be beheaded or run away. So supposedly green and the green knight is used to symbolize nature, fertility and rebirth, and love and the base desires. And because of its connection with fairies and spirits in early English folklore, green is also signified as witchcraft, devilry and evil. It's also related to decay and toxicity. And Lowry seems to be weaving all of these symbolic interpretations throughout the film with his vignettes and sometimes he's weaving those many meanings all at the same time in one shot, which is a really masterful thing to, to do as a director. Now, I'm not going to say I got all of these themes from the film. The strongest parts that I got were nature, pretty obviously, decay and more carnal base desires. The others I kind of saw after doing a little bit more research into the legend of the Green Knight. And that really gets into the heart of the problem with the film. It's extremely vague with its themes, its characters, so it can feel like it's not expressing much of anything to the viewer. The biggest problem, I suppose, is the vagueness that stretches to the characters' personalities. Sometimes it can be difficult to interpret anyone's motivations, in particular, and this is the, the main kind of problem, our main character Gawain is a little bit too vague. 
everything feels a little bit out of focus, which fits the tone of the film and the atmosphere that he's going for, but it also makes it less emotionally engaging as a result. What the viewer is left with is a distinct, eerie feeling, which is great. It's one of those films that leaves you with something after you've watched it, but it also leaves you with a lot of confusion while you're watching the film, and then after the film as well, you, you're not quite sure what it all meant. I mean, there is a line in the film when Gawain gets to the Green Knight and he says, "What well, isn't there anything more? The Knight says, what should there be? You can say to an extent, so maybe Lowry's aware of this kind of vague, vagueness in his films. And maybe you could say, oh, that's kind of reflexive of, you know, our own lives to an extent. We don't really, we don't have like a pathos moment, a big cathartic moment for, for ourselves in life. Not, not all the time anyway. We don't know the meaning behind why we're here, if we're, what we're doing is right. But in the case of The Green Knight, I think it does become a little bit of a problem when it just doesn't quite resonate in that way like if there was just like a little like a tiny bit more to chew on with these characters and everything all of those themes and all of those feelings and all of the vagueness would be that much more impactful i think obviously that's not the film that david larry wanted to make but this is just my opinion at the end of the day isn't it and there's always the argument to be made that you can just go along with it like maybe like a, a david lynch film and then you can just interpret how it relates to oneself personally the difference with, say, a David Lynch film, which is very much up for interpretation, to personal interpretation, and and his better ones at that, there's, like, Blue Velvet or A Race Ahead or Mulholland Drive, there, there is a story there, and there's characters. And while they're all a little bit distant or a little bit dreamlike or unreal, the audience still has a good grasp on who they are, and they can buy into them with real motivations. Everyone in the Green Knight is so two-dimensional, it's, it's hard to be fully immersed in the film. I'm all for going for with dream logic, but there's a limit where I feel like I need something more to chew on. That's the bad side of it. This is still like a really great film that's very intriguing at the very least. The shots, editing, the colour palette for the film, you can obviously imagine it's very green. And it's all fittingly dreamscapey. And the themes involving decay and death, nature versus man, man versus temptation, and the fear man feels for death, they're all very strong. If at the very least it doesn't make you think of like all these things, it definitely puts you in the headspace where you look at life around you in a slightly different way. I do think it's difficult to say though what the film is really about necessarily, not that it has to be about anything, without looking, without researching into the Arthurian mythos it can feel a little bit light on themes and meaning. And the conclusion does slightly resolve the aimlessness and confusion throughout the film. I really like the green cloth girdle that's worn for protection, apparently. Originally, they started out as symbols for protection, and then later on in the years, the stories like changed. They became symbols of shame and cowardice. A little bit later on, it's finally adopted as a symbol of honor. That signifies a transformation from good to evil and back to good again in just like this one piece of cloth. And we see both versions in the film, much like we see many versions of Gawain throughout the film. Like all the different versions of Gawain all pulled from different stories and different myths and like slight changes on the myths and slight changes on the story to make him either like the best knight in the realm or he's kind of a lazy lout who's kind of the worst knight in, uh, in Arthur's court. And without spoiling it, there is a part that reminded me of Scorsese's The Last Temptation of the Christ. I mean, that's a direct parallel between Gawain and Christ. Also, like, each fight is set one year apart and each one on Christmas Day. I suppose this makes this one of the most unsettling Christmas movies of all time. So Gawain falls somewhere in between the Valiant Knight and the failed hero in this film, not really being either, but somewhere in the middle. Quite similar to perhaps how people feel about themselves or like watch themselves in their in their daily lives flip-flopping if you like between the valiant knight and the failed hero it does become more relatable because of that failure and the desire to do better even so it i mean that's that's about as far as it goes it's when the vignettes start is when the film really gets going and really becomes a lot of fun and the shots 
and the journey become the most enthralling things really so in regards to performances everyone's performances is pretty 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 good really so dev patel is suitably heroic and conflicted throughout his journey somehow he just has that leading man kind of like vibe going on still something of that like boyishness to dev patel even though i don't know how old he is now he must be in his mid-30s or something but there's still something of that boyishness that allows dev patel to just like be a a young knight going on an adventure and it works somehow and sean harris is satisfyingly distant from ourselves as his character demands and needs to be for Gawain as well. That kind of odd look he has creates that very unsettled atmosphere for the start of the film, despite how nice he's being to Gawain. Alicia Vikander plays her role well with what little she's allowed to do. She has one scene in which she has a monologue that's so alien it's hard to glean much from her character, but she pulls it off really well. Everyone else fills the archetype they need to fulfill for the role and they all very much look the part they need to to look for to just make a, a very strange atmosphere possible and the costumes themselves I, I mean i can't overstate actually how great the costumes are they're absolutely fantastic and in like the last 20 minutes of the film you really do get a sense of incoming rot and corruption with like the pale greens that they that they're wearing in those scenes and the makeup and cgi is actually great as well I mean, all of this is very much intentional and deserves respect for how bold Lowry is being here and how well he executes exactly what he wants and how he really does get his audience to feel like that unsettled. This is almost a great film. For me, it needs a little bit more expressed character-wise, narratively in the film to really get my mind racing around everything I think it, it wants me to think and feel but there isn't another film that actually makes me feel the way that I feel after watching this film. And that, that really has to say something. So in the end, I enjoyed The Green Knight for what it is, but I still felt a little underwhelmed by its style over substance direction. It's definitely not substance-less, but it's definitely in very murky waters. And the vagueness can make it, I think, feel a little bit intimidating to maybe the average audience member. And even the committed art film fan may find it a little empty in moments. There's no reason there shouldn't be more films like that about. It's just a lot of people find that style kind of aloof, somewhat maybe pretentious and a little bit frustrating to watch. However, personally, I found its haunting atmosphere left me in a state of mind that I don't usually get from films. Kind of like Gaspar Noe's climax. It's more experiential. So for that experience and touching on themes like the acceptance of death, the film will stay with me and I can say I value the experience and the different way it made me think of the world for a few hours after viewing it. One thing I can say is David Lowry definitely has a cinematic voice well worth listening to and I can't wait to see what he does next. But that's it, thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.